I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV for the week of August 3rd, 2016. It's good to be back. I've missed doing the show. Apparently, Josh did an excellent job on his own. Many of you don't want me to return. Well, too bad. You're stuck with me. I guess. I don't know. I'm sure you missed the banter and the interplay. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> yes. It's scary when he's alone. But, yeah, lots of, lots of time away from the shop. Uh, but... I'm back, and comics are awesome, and that's what we're going to talk about. So we're here to give you our picks for this week's best comics, and I've been really looking forward to this week, because we got uh, sneak previews of a couple of the books that came out this week, and we were crazy about them then, and we're still crazy about them now. So my pick of the week is one of those. It is Kill or Be Killed by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, the creators behind Criminal and Fatal, and the Eisner Award-winning The Fade Out. And this is uh, similar yet different territory for these guys. This is kind of a, I, I don't want to say a noir thriller because it takes place presumably in, it does take place in Pleasant, Pleasant Day, Pleasantville, in Present Day, and is about a down on his luck 20-something guy who just has had it with life and he's ready to, to punch his ticket and something happens that gives him a, a second chance at life but with a steep price. Uh, and you might figure out what that is by the title of the book called Kill or Be Killed. Um, so you've got a supernatural element in here. You've got uh, kind of a, a vigilante type story, but it's more than that. There, this is so, and it's a long book. It's like, I don't know, lots of pages. It's longer <laughs> than a regular, regular comic. And I really, really dug it uh, from the first time I read it to the second time I read it. And with, as with most of the Brubaker and Phillips books, you get back matter in the single comics. And this one is a, a, uh, an editorial or commentary about the movie Death Wish, starring Charles Bronson, which many of you may be too young to remember. I hear that they're looking at remaking it, though. I've heard that also. Um, so, as with most Brubaker Phillips books, you get so much bang for your buck and I highly endorse Kill or Be Killed as do you I do fully yes. and heavily uh, what, what, for example what are some other Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips books if I like those I would like this Criminal Criminal sure. um, The Fade Out The Fade Out I, I mentioned all of them okay. <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> I said Criminal, Fatal and The Fade Out um, Brubaker has also written Velvet uh, with not artwork by Sean Phillips it's and by, if I uh, don't like crime books what else has Ed Brubaker written <laughs> Captain America, America Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier, Catwoman with artwork by Darwin Cook. Uh, Gotham Central with Greg Rucka. Yeah, uh, Ed, and Ed Brubaker is just a great all-around guy. <laughs> Very talented writer. Awesome stuff. It is rated M for Mature, by the way. <clears throat> yes, it is. Uh, next up, my pick of the week is Jeff Steinberg, Champion of Earth, uh, from Oni Press, written by Joshua Hale Fialkoff, who you may remember from The Bunker, and uh, Tony Fleeks, who you may remember from My Little Pony. Uh, <laughs> so what do a uh, down, uh, not, uh, not down on his luck, but a, a mediocre video store employee, an alien invasion, and a massive poop all have in common? Read Jeff Steinberg, Champion of Earth, to find out. Uh, this is fun and just ridiculous. Uh, the characterizations are actually really solid, but it's just sort of fun and humorous. Uh, I really love the way we see, I don't know, maybe half an hour, an hour of this guy's life. There's some flashbacks around. But the core story is a very brief period, and there's really great moments in there. Um, you know, there's lots of geeky references and pop culture stuff and uh, some bathroom humor, and it's just exceptionally great. Um, Fialkov has written a number of cool books, and this is a little bit of a different... This is a much, a much lighter tone than we normally get from him, but the ideas and the world building are still there, uh, and I just thought it was great. We got a preview a couple weeks ago, and like Mark said, we were crazy about it. Yeah, it was... Jeff Steinberg and Killer Be Killed were neck and neck with me for my pick of the week. So we, Jeff, or Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, Josh went Jeff. with one and I went with the other. If you're a fan of the movie Clerks, mm -hmm. you totally want to pick this up. Uh, if you're a fan of any of Kevin Smith's stuff, this definitely has a Kevin Smith vibe to it. Um, but it's, it's rare to get a laugh out loud funny comic book that you can recommend to a wider audience. I mean, a lot of times humor is very personal. What I found fun, I find funny. He may not find funny. You may not find funny. But this, I think, will be universally appreciated by everyone, so you should pick it up. Uh, I wasn't here, obviously, for the last two weeks, and I didn't get to talk about Nightwing number one when it came out, so I'll talk about Nightwing number two out this week, which I think was, number one was last week, right? It was, 
or was two it two weeks, weeks ago? ago? I'm pretty sure it was two weeks ago. It wasn't that long ago. But uh, Tim Seeley is writing Nightwing just as he did prior to the rebirth. And we've got artwork by Javier, Javier sorry, Fernandez. And this is awesome. And Nightwing is, is a great character because he, while trained by Batman... And in many ways, similar to Batman, he's almost a 180 from Batman. He's he's a much lighter character. He's got a great sense of humor. Uh, he's got you know long-standing relationships with other members of the DC universe. Batman does too, but not so much. I mean, with Batman, it's like Superman and Wonder Woman. That's it. Nightwing is friends with everybody. Well, and it's also a, a tonal thing. Like everybody yeah. knows Batman, but Batman is sort of manipulative, and Nightwing's more genuine. Oh. Yeah, and that's probably why I like it. And Seeley is doing a great job writing writing the character. Uh, I like the internal monologue that's going on in Nightwing's head. Seeley tells you everything you need to know about the character uh, when you pick up the first issue or the Rebirth issue, or even this issue to some degree. So uh, prior to this, Dick Grayson was a member of Spiral. He was a spy working undercover, kind of sort of for Batman. Uh, and he's back undercover again, but he's working for the Parliament of Owls, which is the new uh, offshoot of the Court of the Owls. And you don't know who's using who in this situation, which is kind of cool. So if you like spy movies and thrillers, uh, you know this is right up your alley. We also get introduced to a, a Nightwing's new partner. We got introduced to him at the end of the first issue, and his name is something Raptor. That's right, Raptor. With the bird theme. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and he, this is an interesting character. I mean, I, I'm intrigued by, by Raptor. Uh, he is kind of act, acting almost like a big brother to Nightwing. He, he ribs him and he uh, razzes on him, but he also steps up to protect him in certain situations. So who knows what's going to happen with this book. All I know is it's a, an excellent read and it's fun and Nightwing deserves. This is the book that Nightwing deserves. <laughs> and you deserve it too. Uh uh, next up for me, we've got Batman number four, part of the DC Rebirth, written by Tom King with art by is it David, David Finch? Finch. It is David Finch. And uh, the storyline going on in Bat Batman is primarily tied up with the Gotham's new Superman style pow superhero, super powered heroes who have shown up in Gotham to protect it, and uh, the degree to which Batman does or doesn't trust them and will or will not work with them. That all sort of comes to a head in this issue. And we see that other factors are perhaps manipulating the Gotham's and possibly Batman as well. We also get more teasing of the Monster Men, which is the big all Bat book crossover that's coming in uh, October, later this Maybe? year. <laughs> it might be late. It might be actually it's September. Is it? Okay, yeah, I know it's September. September, October. Um, but I, I don't know who Tom King is, but uh, he writes a pretty good Batman book. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of really good dialogue and introspection. I, I like the way he characterizes all of these characters that we're already familiar with. Uh, we get cameos by some people. Actually, I won't tell you who they are. But uh, it's interesting. It's fun. It's I, I'm constantly amazed that people are able to come up with new cool Batman stories to tell after 75 years. And King is managing that. So good on you, sir. Yeah, I, I will also throw my hat in the ring as a fan of Tom King's Batman. So all four issues have been stellar, including uh, the Rebirth issue. So I hope he sticks around for a long time. And it's making me want to read his other stuff. So he did, did he's, he doing, he's doing Vision okay. over at Marvel. First volume's out in trade now. And Sheriff of Babylon over at Vertigo. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in more Tom King, check those out. Also new this week, and the timing is impeccable, we get <laughs> Suicide Squad Rebirth, number one, by Rob Williams and Philip Tan. And just in time for the Suicide Squad movie to hit theaters, I am admittedly not a Suicide Squad fan, but I picked it up and read it anyway because it's a number one and because I wanted to share my thoughts with you, if I liked it. And I did. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the Suicide Squad. I, I, I mean, I own a comic shop, so I have probably better than average knowledge of the Suicide Squad, but I just don't care. <laughs> and this uh, issue made me want to see what happens next. And I think Williams and the editors did a great job of pacing with this because you don't get the entire Suicide Squad thrust onto you in the first issue. You only get three members plus the leader. So the story really focuses on uh, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and Captain Boomerang with some Rick Flagg thrown in there and, of course, Amanda Waller. Uh, I wish they could decide 
what Amanda Waller is going to look like in the DC <laughs> universe because she's back to the way she was uh, prior pre to, new pre 52. New Fifty Two, I think, which is fine. I, it's just my 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 brain, and I think a lot of people's brains operate this way that when you see a character, you want it to be consistent across right. whatever. So, but that's just a minor nitpick. Uh, also, cameo by a very angry Barack Obama. Uh, <laughs> so, Suicide Squad Rebirth. Perfect for new readers, people that are going to see the movie, people that have never read a comic before. This book is for you. If you've been reading Suicide Squad for years, you'll like it too. And especially if you've been reading the new 52 version of Rebirth, I don't know why you wouldn't pick this up. Uh, also, in conjunction with that, we get uh, Harley Quinn, number one, by the creative team of Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, and whoever the artist is, uh, Chad Harden, who I believe was the artist on the previous series as well. So, a whole lot of Harley this week. Holy Harley, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, next up, I've got a couple of... These books are still awesome, and maybe especially awesome at the moment. Uh, we've got Doctor Strange number 10, by written by Jason Aaron, with art by Chris Bacalo. Bacalo? Somebody said it in an interview at Comic-Con, and I learned how to pronounce it, and now I've forgotten. So, Chris, give me a call and let me know. Uh, this is the finale of The Last Days of Magic, and it is, it is epic. Um, it is Doctor Strange fighting with the last vestiges of his physical and magical strength, trying to save the world, uh, confronting his past sins, seeing the people he's helped and the people he's let down, and it's really, really good. Um, I would not have believed possible the degree to which Jason Aaron has re-envisioned uh, Doctor Strange. Like, Doctor Strange has always been sort of this fringe character in the Marvel Universe who shows up when things are really bad and speaks in a very specific way and has a certain tendencies. And this is a this is a action hero Doctor Strange. I, I want to watch the adventures of this guy. He's self-deprecating and fun, and uh, he never stops punching. And uh, also, really good this week, Invincible Iron Man number 12, written by the always awesome Brian Michael Bendis, with art by Mike Diodato. Uh, what we see here is the fallout from Unhum I'm sorry, Uncanny Inhumans number 11, I believe, the one that sold out right away because it was the first appearance of that new Inhuman guy. Ulysses? No. No. I'm and the one that can jump into other oh, people. Oh, Mosaic? Mosaic, that's yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, second printing of that's actually out this week if you missed it the first time and you want to follow your Iron Man's. Uh, it's not super necessary, but in that, the Inhumans bring down Stark Tower, uh, which is essentially an act of war against Tony Stark as part of the ongoing Civil War II conflict. And this is about that. This is about... It wraps up a lot of different pro plot threads, brings things together, sets things up. I think this is a really important issue, a pivotal issue in Iron Man's story. Um, we get resolution to his having gone dark and faking his death. We get the setup of, of him actually meeting Riri Williams, who will be allegedly the new Iron Man, according to the uh, solicits. We get stuff with where his life's going. Uh, it's just great. If you like Iron Man, this is an amazing Iron Man book. And, yeah, it was it was everything I wanted. I have no questions left unanswered. I did see that there's a third Iron Man series coming called uh, Inscrupulous, or Unscrupulous, what is it called? Yeah, but that's not That's Tony. Dr. Doom. Yeah, but when Doom. he said this it's... is an amazing Iron Man story, I thought that's a good title for, for <laughs> a new Iron, Iron Man, Man series. Yeah. <laughs> if they need a fourth title, they could call it Amazing Iron Man. Um, then Spider-Man would sue somebody. Unsavory Iron Man? It's something I don't it's we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we like to highlight older stuff that's available in uh, trade paperback format. And this week we've got one of Dark Horse's mega books. Uh, and by mega, I mean like tons of story, <laughs> tons of pages for very little uh, pesos. We've got Dark Horse Comics slash DC Comics Superman. So we get, in this massive tome... Superman vs. Aliens, Superman vs. Aliens 2, God War, The Superman Madman Hullabaloo, and Superman Tarzan, Sons of the Jungle. Uh, over 350 pages, quite possibly 400 pages, of Superman crossing over with, with uh, Dark Horse characters. And just flipping through this, I mean, what is not to love about a Superman and the New Gods and Darkseid fighting aliens? The 20th Century Fox aliens, you know, the yeah. acid-dripping aliens. Xenomorphs. Or good stuff, good look, stuff. Look at those names on the cover. I know, Dan yeah. Jurgens, Kevin Nolan, Chuck Dixon, Mike Allred. It's like the 90s just threw up on there. <laughs> it is, and, and if that's your jam, then you totally want to pick this up. I, I am a sucker for the uh, aliens and predator universes crossing over with the DC universe. The Batman versus Predator stories are top-notch. 
uh, and the Superman, and there was Batman versus Aliens as well. Yep. Uh, and now we have Superman versus Aliens in two of these, uh, plus Superman and Tarzan, both orphans, both. Uh, you know, with a bit of powers and abilities beyond those of mortal men. They both talk to animals, is that not? No, okay. Yeah, yeah and Superman <laughs> talks to, to like, uh, Crypto yeah. and somebody else. Streaky? No. <laughs> the super cat. It's awesome, and it's available now for the low, low price of 25 bucks. Yeah, look at that. 300 pages? 350 uh, pages? Almost 20, four, 25 yeah, bucks? Gotta be close to 400 deal. pages. Yeah, close yeah. to 400. Uh, last up, I've got a uh, infomercial for you. Uh, Torchwood number one, written by John Barrowman and Carol Barrowman. That's right, Captain Jack himself co-writing a comic series about Captain Jack Harkness and the Torchwood team. Um, Ma, if you're not familiar at all, you don't care, so don't really need to listen to this part. But uh, Torchwood's a Doctor Who spinoff, and. I followed about half the seasons of Torchwood that came out, and I still read this without any problem. If you're, like, knee-deep in the Torchwood universe, uh, this actually takes place after Barrowman and Barrowman's novel about Captain Jack that just came out, I believe it was earlier this year. Exodus and is the name. Exodus is the name of the yes. novel, yes. And it was fun and good. The The art's good. They're, I mean, the, you, the characters are recognizable as the actors, and uh, the writing's good, the dialogue's solid. Torchwood. You gotta love John Barrowman, right? I mean, he's he very is cool. Just—he doesn't hide the fact that he is a fan of the character, that he's a geek. He goes all out. He pushes the envelope, uh, and man, to have his involvement with writing a comic book series is about a character that he played, right? And he has more energy than any human yes. could, should possibly have. I believe that he does. <laughs> Lots of Red Bull, I think. I'll have to ask him if I ever meet him. Uh, so we did get. Uh, Several questions. We've been answering your questions on uh, YouTube, but there was one that we held off on answering because Josh is going to answer it for you now. Someone asked what I thought of The Killing Joke, and boy is... The movie. The movie, yes. Uh, boy, is that a loaded question. Uh, I'm sure if you've been on the internet, you've seen that there was a lot of uh, hullabaloo about The Killing Joke a couple weeks ago at Comic-Con. People were not super thrilled with uh, some of the things that it was implying and some of the things it was stating outright. Letting go all of the nerd rage... It wasn't bad. It was it was enjoyable. Um, the I guess my, my concern, they've had to add some material to flesh it out, and what they've added is what's causing outrage. Uh, it sort of implies some sort of a relationship between Barbara Gordon and Batman, or at least a, some sort of fling type thing. Um, I don't know. She's an adult at that point. Whatever. But also it's been covered already because they had a mention of a past relationship in Batman Beyond when she was commissioner and he was Batman. There were actually flashbacks where they talked about how Nightwing left because of the two of them were involved. So it's not like it's new to the DC animated universe. Um, Quality-wise, the Barbara Gordon story is actually pretty decent. So there's some tonal problems. Uh, it definitely is sort of weird to set up a half hour or 40 minutes of a character story and then have her almost completely dropped out just to get what happens to Batgirl in The Killing Joke. Um... So my main my main complaint about it uh, was that it's not cohesive. Like you have the stuff tacked on at the beginning, and then you have the killing joke. The killing joke part is a almost shot for shot adaptation. It's got Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy playing the Joker and Batman. If you want a big screen adaptation of the killing joke, this is the best one you're ever going to get. So, I hope that information helped. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, if you'd like to see more movie reviews, now usually our reviews are where we tack them on to the end of an episode. We're mm -hmm. running out of time. We do them very quickly. Uh, we discussed doing a Star Trek Beyond review at part of this episode. And I think we'll do it as a standalone. And uh, if if the stars align, we will be seeing Suicide Squad this week, and maybe we'll do one of those too. So if you'd like to see, you know, maybe a ten minute segment on a movie review where we go into a little. Uh, depth on it rather than the cursory reviews. Let us know in the comments because we're up for that. We just don't want to spoil things for you. Um, as usual, if you enjoyed the episode, give us a thumbs up on YouTube and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you keep up to date on our latest videos and share them with anyone that you think would appreciate finding out about comics that are awesome. Until next time, thanks for watching.